Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Gary O'Mara. I'm a teacher of English at the advanced level. And I'm here today just to talk about uh, postmodernism, which in and of itself is a complex idea, and the curriculum. So uh, for students having to deal with, with the theory is, is something fairly new. It's only come into the curriculum uh, since around 2000, uh, 2002. And the idea of postmodernism comes from the academies. It's not generated by the Department of Education. And because of, let's say, left wing ideas, they've moved postmodernism into the curriculum. Now, when you look at the, the texts that are available for students, there are 42 pages of texts that the teacher will have to choose from fiction, non fiction, uh, <clears throat> drama. Um, film, poetry. Now, within that context, the idea of postmodernism has to be explained by the students uh, in their assessments and, and uh, exams. And the theory has to apply to the, the actual uh, uh, elective they're studying. For instance, if they're doing Othello, it's not about Othello's character. It's not about Othello's uh, relationship with Desdemona or Iago. It's about how feminism, Marxism, and race theory fits into Shakespeare. And this is the difficult bit. Without the theory, you can't argue uh, postmodernism. The idea is to break up what is being known as modernism. So there's no truth in this. It's based on one's particular feeling and one's idea of breaking the, the modern, as it were. The best way to work it out is what postmodern isn't and what, what, what it is. So if we go back, a long way back, say, to the end of the Roman period, there was a breakdown. The world turned upside down, for instance. So there was this, what they called the Dark Ages, which is problematical. And at a point in time during the fall of Constantinople in the 15th century, the idea of humanism enters into the Western idea of knowledge. So this is the, the track we're leading on to postmodernism in the 21st century. So the idea of humanism was to bring back all the old learning, Greek, Latin, uh, uh, writings, poetry, drama, the whole thing is then is brought over by scholars from the East, from Constantinople, Greek scholars, who translate it into Italian, which then goes to English. So there's this basis for early modern Europe and the idea of students, uh, universities starting, learning becomes new. It's a new form of life, and particular students. So then we move on. It's inevitable there's an enlightenment. So the Enlightenment comes in the 18th century, where people started to discuss whether there's a God, no God. It's rational, based on science, mathematics, and logic. So that Enlightenment then leads into the Industrial Revolution. So everything changes. People come together closer, people move around the world, they, they come uh, invade people, the, the whole structure of the world changes all of a sudden. People move to the cities. Steam becomes the progenitor of life. Buildings get bigger. So the idea of, of modernity is what you can see based on fact, based on science. All the science, Faraday, all those people are inventing penicillin, uh, inventing antibiotics, etc. It's all what you can see. Now, because of the because of the movement of people coming together, the idea of war became a problem in the 20th century. And out of that, there was, and the First World War and the Second World War, thinkers started to think differently. The old, the old reasons for doing things, they, they say, well, perhaps that's not so. We need to look into meaning. Uh, we need to look in structure. So, so what happens? It's taken up by French thinkers. French thinkers, Roland Barthes, Lyotard, uh, Foucault. And they all say, well, look, uh, it's not, the truth is relative. Einstein says the theory of relativity, everything's moving around. So there's no structure. So thinkers started to think, well, 
if there's no structure, we have to start using language in a different way. So you get this idea of post-modernity, which is just starting. It's moving, it'll move on to artificial intelligence eventually. But post-modernity today is upsetting the structure, which is happening in the United States. So all in all, if you look at postmodernism in the in the books that the boys and girls have to study, for instance, Orwell, they've got to see Orwell and or Shakespeare in the light of postmodern theory, which is a critique of Shakespeare and Orwell. It's not accepting in the ba on the basis of Marxist theory, as I said before, feminism, race theory, and critical theory in particular. So it's a huge problem for students, but generally the standard is, is advanced. It wouldn't be used by, it wouldn't be seen probably as, as applicable to, to students who are doing it, the standard form. So, and poetry is used as well. Film, they, they have to then deconstruct, as it were, uh, the, the, the meaning that we have, they find a new meaning through postmodernism. So it's, it's, it's a, a theory of life, just a theory, a critical theory that's moving, that hasn't stopped. So um, I, I wish everybody the best of, of hope in, in, in learning this, but it requires a, a teacher and a lot of concentration to be able to get the theory, and then you put the theory into the, into the document, the text. Thank you.